Hello children, let me welcome you to the virtual class of the Brihan Mumbai Mahanagar Palika. My name is Shraddha teacher. Children, we are in the middle of this COVID-19 pandemic and because of that we are not able to go to school but that doesn't mean we are going to stop learning. So we are going to do many lessons which are very interesting from your textbook through the virtual class here. So let us do a lesson in English today. Come on children then, let us learn a lesson in standard 9th English. But this will not be a new lesson children. It will be the lesson that we started doing last time. So remember what was the lesson that we started doing last time? It was lesson number 3.4. And the name of the lesson was how the first letter was written. So in that lesson we saw the story of uh, three people. That is a father, mother and the daughter. And we also saw how the father and daughter went out fishing and finally the confusion that was created. So in today's part of the lesson children, we are going to look at certain uh, grammar parts and certain vocabulary parts which is there in the textbook for you. But before that, we will do a quick recap of what we learned last time. So we will not see the entire story because we have seen the entire story in detail last time. So let us look at the main points in our story and let us move forward. So this story is part 2 of the lesson or this video is part 2 of the lesson how the first letter was written. So we saw that it is a story of three people Tegumai and we had Teshumai and Taffy. So these were the three people in the lesson. They were from the Neolithic age. We saw that they were stone men, actually cavemen. All right. And their lives were very simple. And their lives revolved around just finding food for themselves. So they used to go fishing and they used to go into the forest to search for uh, small uh, animals as well as for fruit, berries, etc. And then one such day, Tegumai along with uh, Taffy, they went fishing. But on the way, there were a lot of beaver swamps. And these beaver swamps are dangerous places, especially for children. So Taffy and Tegumai, they went fishing. And then you will see how Taffy, Tegumai and Teshumai, they had a big, you can say, misunderstanding. There, when they went fishing, Tegumai broke his spear and he did not have a spare one or an extra one. And therefore, what he did was he sat down to repair or mend his spear. In the meanwhile, there was a stranger who came there. And immediately, Taffy decided to write a letter to her mother. Okay, Teshumai. But like I told you, all the activities that these people knew in those times were to gather food, eat the food and go to sleep. So they never went to school. They did not know how to read and write. But nevertheless, Taffy decided to write a letter. And then how did she write the letter? She wrote the letter using a shark tooth which was part of the necklace that the stranger had worn. And she scribbled some pictures on the birch bark. And she asked the stranger to go and give it to her mother. Now the stranger was very happy. He did not understand Taffy's language. And Taffy did not understand his language. So there was a big confusion here. And now this man, he took the birch bark, he took the letter and he went and he gave it to Teshumai. Now when Teshumai saw it and when she read it, she totally misinterpreted the letter. Why did she misinterpret the letter? Because it was not the written word. It was not words or letters which were written. They were drawings and that also the drawings made by a young girl. So she made some mistakes also while drawing. So when she saw the picture, she thought that the stranger had killed her husband and then she created a huge hue and cry 
and all the women around from the neolithic tribe they came and they thrashed that poor stranger so this was a kind of a joke or the fun in a way you can say in the story written by rudyard kipling that we saw last time we also tried to understand how the story is relevant why because if they had known to read and write if they knew how to write letters how to use language this problem might not have arisen so we saw in a way along with the fun we also realize that it is extremely important for us to be literate it is important for us to be educated so that was a moral that we took away from the story now we will look at certain uh, you can say points which are part of grammar exercises in your textbook so we have two one is we are going to talk about quotation marks or punctuation marks and then we are going to talk about the main clause in a sentence so come on let us proceed to them one by one and let us look at the punctuation mark that we have to learn in this particular lesson we have to talk about inverted commas or quotation marks now inverted commas could be single we can call it single inverted comma or we can call it double inverted comma but when we say quotation marks it means a double inverted comma so what are the inverted comma they can be single or double let us try and understand what is the meaning of inverted commas when do we use inverted commas and what are the examples where inverted commas are used now before talking about inverted commas let me tell you that this is all part of the punctuation marks so when we were in the lower classes i think in standard 7th you have done a detailed lesson about punctuation marks okay so you have full stop you have commas so these are extremely important punctuation marks are extremely important in english because it sometimes changes the meaning of sentences it adds meaning to sentences so punctuation marks are extremely important having said that let us talk about inverted commas or quotation marks specially in this particular video we are also going to do a few exercises which have been given based on punctuation marks but that will be later after understanding what the meaning of punctuation marks are so let us start by understanding what is the meaning of quotation marks quotation marks means double inverted commas so inverted commas single or double are used to mark the beginning and end of quotations okay so inverted commas like i told you they could be single they could be double they are used to mark the beginning and the end of quotations quotations means what something which a famous person has said even when you talk about what an ordinary person has said that is when you uh, talk about direct speech you make use of quotation marks for example see here he said look at the quotation mark i am very hungry full stop and quotation mark so you have uh, began and you have ended the sentence or the quotation there using these double inverted commas okay inverted commas means commas on top of the sentence keats line now this is a quotation because keats is a very very famous poet he has said something so it has become a quotation so keats lines see quotation mark a thing of beauty is a joy forever end so this is what keats said a thing of beauty is a joy forever is what keats said is very famous okay so you saw how quotation marks are used to talk about what someone said or also what a famous person said so that is a quotation you quote someone you use the exact words okay let us see some more ideas about inverted commas so you can have single inverted commas here can you see there are just two commas there single commas on either side or you could also have double inverted commas so can you see the difference okay single inverted commas can also be used and double inverted commas can also be used now there are four main functions of these inverted commas why what are the different functions to indicate the title of something so when you want to 
say what the title of a particular paragraph is, then most of the times you use the single inverted comma. So when you want to highlight the title, you use double inverted commas for spoken words. Spoken words means saying. Just now you said, na, he said it is raining. She said, I am coming. So for this, I am coming, it is raining, these are all spoken words. So for that, you will use double inverted commas. You may use single or double for quotations. You also use single inverted comma to mark off an individual word from the rest of the sentence. Okay, if you want to highlight a particular word or a phrase in a sentence, there also you tend to make use of single or double inverted commas. So these are the inverted commas, single as well as double. Let us now <coughs> talk a little bit about examples of these inverted commas. So see, Josh said, comma, and you have the double inverted comma or the single inverted comma here. You have no right to be here. See, you can make use of a double or a single one. There is no harm. Next, what he asked is the meaning of this. So, in a way, he asked, what is the meaning of this? My favorite story is the lion, the witch and the wardrobe. So, you want to highlight the name of the story in this entire sentence. So that is why you use the inverted comma. When shall we meet, we three meet again, are the opening words to the play. My dad thinks he's so cool when he dances, but really he's an embarrassment. So you want to highlight the word cool. So these are all examples where we have made use of inverted commas. Now I told you there is an exercise where we are supposed to make use of this punctuation. So note the punctuation used in the story. Here, single inverted commas or quotation marks have been used to show conversation. Rewrite the following using double quotation marks. So everywhere here, single inverted commas have been used. What are you supposed to do? You are just supposed to convert it into double quotation marks or double inverted comma. Very simple. So come on, pause the video for a second and try to see whether you are able to do it on your own and then come back and check the answer that I will give you now. So how will you write the first one? Here's a pretty kettle of fish, said Tegumai. Okay, so if you notice, there is one comma here which has been added along with the double inverted comma. It will take me half the day to mend this. It will take me half a day to mend this. So this is rather simple. You have just changed the format of the comma. You have not added any other element to this. Okay. So this is one exercise as far as single and double inverted comma is concerned. Now let us go to the next exercise in your book and that is about clauses. So there is an exercise in your book asking you to underline the main clauses in the sentence. Now to underline the clause, you will have to know what the meaning of clauses. We have of course learnt about meaning of clauses previously also. But when it comes up as part of a lesson, we always do it once again. So let us see what the main clauses are, what is the meaning of the main clause and then we will go and underline the uh, sentences or which are part of our exercise. So let us see what the meaning of a main clause is. So a main clause can stand alone as a complete sentence. So remember children, when you are talking about main clause, we cannot study it in isolation. So, if you look at subordinate clause also together at the same time, you will understand what the difference between a main clause and a subordinate clause is. Okay. So, what we will do here is, we will look at certain complete sentences and we will try to pick out the main clauses when we do examples. Okay. But now when we are understanding what the main clause is, remember 
so the main clause can stand alone as a complete sentence we have already talked about clauses i told you so we also know that the two types of clauses are one is the main clause then the other clause which will be there is the subordinate clause or we can also call them as the independent clause and the dependent clause okay so i hope this idea is clear to you so what is a main clause it can stand alone as a complete sentence so see the example he went to the movies is an example of a main clause now when i'm showing it to you this way you will think are this is a sentence yes main clause can also be called as sentences of their own that is why i told you that we have to look at it in comparison to subordinate clause so you have to see both clauses to understand what the difference between the two are okay so a main clause is not introduced by a subordinating conjunction or a greater pronoun it doesn't need any introduction okay it has got its own identity that is why it is called as independent so this is the meaning of a main clause let us now look at one more way to look at the meaning of main clause so the main clause is called called as an independent clause also so see a main clause should contain a subject and a verb all right so if the main clause if the clause has to be called a main clause it should have a subject it should have a verb why because it is independent okay that means it is independent means it has got complete meaning it is a sentence in its own right and to call any group of words as a sentence then that group of word must have a subject also it must have a verb also sometimes it could have objects sometimes the object could be skipped but the subject and the verb is a must so subject is what then subject is the person or the thing which is involved in the action and what is the verb the verb is the action which is happening so every main clause will have a subject and a verb only then it will be qualifying as a main clause then let us look at some examples here i first met her in paris where i lived as a small child so look at these two parts of the sentence they are given in two colors so to highlight that these are two different parts so i first met her in paris read it again does it make complete sense yes it does what about the second part the part marked in green where i lived as a small child so where i lived as a small child is somewhere incomplete isn't it it is not leading you to any concrete idea so i first met her in paris is the main clause and where i lived as a small child is the subordinate clause so here we have a sentence where we have a main clause and a subordinate clause and it must be clear to you the idea of a main clause is what come to the next example again we have two parts in the sentence which are joined together with the and so the first part is i like bananas and i like grapes so look at the first sentence in pink i like banana yes it has got complete meaning i like bananas means i'm fond of bananas look at the second part in purple i like grapes here also it is complete that means in this particular sentence there are two main clauses and there is no subordinate clause so this can also happen all right so here there are two main clauses now why have i shown it to you why i have i taken two different kind of examples to make it clear to you what the meaning of a main clause is so in the first example i first met her in paris is main clause in the second one you have two main clauses because both the parts of the sentences have got complete meaning and they are not dependent on anything else all right so these are examples let us look at some more examples so see this is a sentence again we have two main clauses here 
okay children love halloween and they dress in costumes now here we will try to see whether it fits the test of subject and verb let us see whether these two main clauses are uh, you know standing up to the concept that every main clause should have a subject and a verb so this is the sentence children love halloween and they dress in costumes so the first main clause is children love halloween and the second main clause is they dress in costumes so see both these sentences are main clauses both the parts in this sentence in this sentence are main clauses why let us check so in the first part children love halloween children is the noun or the subject and love is the verb and halloween is the object now i told you na you could write uh, sometimes in some sentences there will be the object present sometimes there will not be the object but there even there if you even if there is no object sometimes the a clause can be the main clause okay so children love halloween is one main clause let us look at the next one now main clause 2 they dress in costume so they the pronoun is the subject here dress is the verb and in costumes is the phrase over here okay but the main thing is in both the parts of the sentence where we have two main clauses both the main clause have a subject that is children is a subject in one and the pronoun they is a subject in the second in the first one love is the verb and in the second one dress is the verb so this is how we know how a main clause qualifies to be a main clause what are the different things which are necessary to make a main clause a main clause okay let us look at some more examples but before that each main clause can be a sentence by itself i already told you that every main clause is a sentence by itself look at some um, example sentences where the main clause and the subordinate clause have been segregated i knew that he wanted to go home i knew is the main clause why you find out now you apply the concept of subject and verb to it and see which is the subject which is the verb he succeeded because he worked hard okay next he was contented although he was poor he never understood how this came about she was telling us that she knew the secret of his birth the children were crying because they were hungry the train had left before i reached the station the patient had died before the doctor came in i would do this if i were allowed okay there is this uh, this where there is a full stop which is a misprint okay it's printed by mistake so do not consider the full stop after the this so these are example sentences where the main clause and the subordinate clause have been segregated and you can clearly see which the main clauses are all right so now there is one uh, this uh, you can say exercise in the book that is the reason isn't it that we started learning what is the meaning of main clause so let us look at the exercise now let me leave you to pause the video for some time to read all the sentences there are just four of them and pick out the main clauses and underline them do not directly see the answers which i will give you okay so let us read the sentences one by one sentence number 1 and she was tegumai popsulai's best beloved and her own mummy's best beloved and she was not spanked half as much as was good for her 
and they were all three very happy. So see how many main clauses can you pick up from this sentence or pick out from this sentence. So we were, we have she was Tegumai Bopsulai's best beloved. Then we have she was not spanked half as much as was good for her. Then we have they were all three very happy. Okay. So see in one sentence we have three main clauses. Let us go to the next one. One day Tegumai Popsulai went down through the beaver swamp to the Wagai river to spear carpfish for dinner and Taffy went too. So let us check and find out how many main clauses are we able to locate in this. So one day Tegumai Bopsulai went down the beaver swamp to the Wagai river. Okay. Then Taffy went too. If you want you can take the uh, line, the red line to the end of that part. Okay. One day Tegumai Bopsulai went down through the beaver swamp to the Wagai river to spear carpfish for dinner. And the second one is Taffy went to See the next one. They were miles and miles from home and Tegumai had forgotten to bring any extra spears. So come on, which are the main clauses here and how many do we have? We have two here. The first one is, they were miles and miles from home. The second one is, Tegumai had forgotten to bring any extra spears. Coming to the last sentence here. Just then, a stranger man came along the river, but he belonged to a far tribe, the Tevaras, and he did not understand one word of Tegumai's language. So you have the first one, just then, a stranger man came along the river. Second main clause, he belonged to a far tribe. Third main clause, he did not understand one word of Tegumai's language. So you see we have only four sentences but we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten clauses in these four sentences. Okay. So this is how you separate the main clauses from the subordinate clauses. At the same time, we have separated the main clause. But remember, you can separate the main clause and you can also understand what the meaning of subordinate clauses are. Okay, so that was the grammar exercise, children. Now, let us go to some other exercises which are there in the book. So, we are supposed to write a short passage or essay on women power in the Neolithic, Medieval and present times. So, I am going to talk about the Neolithic and Medieval times over here. Okay. You will think about the present times and then you will make a small passage. So, in the Neolithic period, women were thought to be equal to men. The women stayed at home and they tended to farms etc. There was also a great emergence of female deities means goddesses. Okay. Now you can look at the internet. Go to Google and find out more about the role of women in the Neolithic. Neolithic means ancient times. Let us talk about women in the medieval times. So now women in the medieval times, they left their homes. And they went out to farm along with the men. They also took part in many activities like they used to grind corn, they used to spin, they used to weave, they used to produce cloth, pottery, etc. And of course, you know what the scene 
of women empowerment is in today's times. Okay, that is in the modern times. So I have given you these two clues. Now you think and you write a paragraph or a short essay on women power. That is how the role of women in society changed gradually from the Neolithic period to the medieval period and to the modern times. And the last, you can say, exercise, they've asked you to read these stories. One is the Just So, so Stories and the other one is the Jungle Book by Rudyard Kipling. So we already discussed about the Jungle Book. So see, this is an image of the Jungle Book. There you can see Mowgli and you can see many animals. So you have Bagheera. Okay. If you have, if you remember Jungle Book, you have Bagheera, you have Sher Khan, you have Balu, all these characters. And Jungle Book is a favorite with people. Even though you are, you might be an aged person, you might be a kid, you might be a young person. Jungle Book is everyone's favorite. So, this is the last exercise where I have asked you to read some of these stories. Okay. So, today children, we did part 2 of the lesson, how the first letter was written. We talked quickly in a few words about the story. And then we went on and we talked about the two exercises. One which was related to the inverted commas or to quotation marks. And we solved the exercise also from the textbook. And the other one was about clauses. So that is all for today in this particular lesson. So children, now you have watched the video. So after you watch the video now, you will have to complete a few simple tasks. Now you might have watched the video on your computers or your laptops or your mobile phones. Now, after you watch the video, what will you do? You will please go to the description box which is given below the video. So, what is the description box? See, the description box looks like this. Alright? And after you go to the description box, you will see that there are a few questions there. Now, what are these questions about? These questions are about the lesson that we just learned or the video that you just watched so what will you do you will think back properly about the lesson and you will try and answer these questions and note down the answers in your notebook if you want okay after that we have another task waiting you will also click on the link which you will find in the description box to fill up the Google form. So now what is the Google form children? It is nothing but a simple form. There are a few simple questions there about the video which you just saw and also about yourself. So these are the tasks now that you will have to complete after you watch each video. So children, wasn't that a very interesting lesson? I'm sure you learned a lot of new things in this lesson. If you have liked this video, please hit the like button and also subscribe to my video so that you will get to see all the videos which I keep posting regularly.